Hello. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, one of the most useful snails in the saltwater tank. For those who are in the hobby, uh, these are an indispensable tool in my opinion, and that is the fighting conch snail. Now these snails are really interesting. You can see one of them just popping his antenna in and out there. They are not like your typical conch snail, which is very, very large. And when I mention getting conch snails for aquariums, people freak out because they think I'm talking about this monstrously huge snail. The fighting conch snail, as it's known, is only about three to four inches in length. They are by far the most effective snail at cleaning a sand bed. A lot of people go for those Nasaria snails, and I'll tell you what, these five snails, if you can take a look around here, if you take a look at the color of that sand bed, it's pretty much all white. These five snails maintain a 60-pound sand bed that I have here in my 90-gallon tank. Uh, and I have very few brown spots with these five in here. Uh, these are just three of them right here. There's a fourth over here, and the other one's bur burrowed somewhere else, uh, somewhere in the tank. Um, in addition, uh, they are a fabulous alternative to sand-sifting gobies. The huge advantage they have over the sand-sifting gobies is they are not going to dump sand all over your rock work and the bottom. They are also not going to create a ridiculous sandstorm in your tank. When I had my Diamond Watchman gobies, it would always drive me nuts because my tank would look cloudy and gross a lot of the time because he would come in here and just stir up all, the entire sand bed and just make an absolute mess of it. So they are referred to as the fighting conch because supposedly the males will fight each other. However, I have not necessarily really seen that. I mean, sometimes they'll climb on top of each other uh, but they, I have not seen any serious aggression on them. These fighting conch snails are very unique. They are very, very quick, and they are incredibly hardy. These are the one snail that my Melanaris wrasse has just flat out given up on in terms of pestering or bothering because they are so good at keeping hidden when they need to stay hidden and coming out when they need to. They are also good if you have hermit crabs and you're worried about hermit crabs picking off your snails. These guys are the masters at shaking them off and just they know how to uh, burrow in the sand when the time is right or shake them off or climb in places where the snails or crabs just can't hold on. So they are just really interesting and adept creatures. They are also, as mentioned, they are incredibly hardy. These guys know how to survive in an aquarium. They, they are very, very adept at knowing how to um, stay away from predators. They're durable. They can deal with uh, temperature of water fluctuations a bit. Obviously, you know, nothing too extreme, of course, but, um, but they're better adept than most snails that I've seen. Now, there are a couple of different kinds. There is what they call a dwarf fighting conch. If you have a smaller tank, like a nano tank, I would say a single dwarf fighting conch would be a good addition to your tank if you're just looking for a clean sand bed. Um, if you have, say, a 20 to 30 gallon tank, maybe about 20 to 30 pound sand bed, I would say probably a couple of these full-size fighting conches will, will definitely keep your sand clean for you. Uh, in the case of mine, I had a couple, <laughs> there you go, <laughs> there's a good punch for you from the other fighting conch snail, and you get the name from that. Uh, that's a surprise to me, I haven't actually seen that before, but that was funny. Anyways, uh, for me, I found that when I had like two or three of them, it just wasn't enough, there was still a lot of brown sand, so I ended up bumping it up to five, and now the sand bed is pristine. The... Um, the conch snails also will eat detritus, you know, fish poop, um, which gives them a certain versatility that a goby won't do because the goby has no desire to eat that stuff. I don't blame them, but 
Anyways, the fighting conch snail will eat detritus. It'll eat leftover food bits in the tank as well, similar to a crab will on the substrate. And also, uh, several of them I have seen, both at my local fish store and mine, will also periodically climb up and do a little bit of work on your rock work. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and say that they're great at cleaning algae off of rocks. They're really not, but it is nice to have that a little added benefit that if they get, you know, feel that they've cleaned up the sand bed enough that they'll also go in and do a little bit of cleaning in the rock works. So, and as mentioned, I, you are going to be hard-pressed to find another snail that's going to match these guys for personality and for function. Um, they, uh, they are just interesting characters, uh, as you've seen here. So, anyways, uh, the fighting conch snail, uh, highly recommended for those of you who have uh, sandy substrates in your marine tanks. Uh, obviously, if you have a bare bottom, I wouldn't necessarily recommend a conch snail for it, but for anybody who has a sand substrate in their marine tank, I would highly recommend a conch snail, and just make sure that you keep it proportional to the size of your tank and your sand bed. Just do a little research on that, and you should be in good shape. But uh, all in all, just a great snail. These are a bit more expensive. You know, if you're expecting that dollar to two dollar snail, that is not a conch. I paid ten dollars a piece for each one of these, so I have about fifty dollars worth of conch snails in there. Um, but given the service they provide, their versatility, their durability, um, I I have nothing but good things to say about the conch snails. And uh, and they are just goofy and kind of entertaining to watch and to see what they do. So that's all I've got and on that, and thanks for watching.